let's try factoring these trinomials. Now uh, these have two different variables in uh, one of the factoring problems. And, um, and I'm going to take a slightly different approach than I have from example 5 and 6 um, in that I'm not going to do my whole diamond thing. I, I'm actually going to do a, do a guess and check method. And this, and this kind of method actually usually is faster. Um, but usually you got to be comfortable doing the guess and check. So uh, the thing about, about doing the whole diamond where you multiply the A times B and then, and then put the C right there. Um, or I'm sorry, uh, it's uh, when you multiply A and C and then put the B in the bottom, is that this this always works. Um, just the reason why that I quite don't want to do that here is because you know like when you know when I, when I multiply 12 and 21, you know I'm gonna get like 200 and something, and then I have to you know add that to get negative 19, and so that just gets very convoluted. So um, I'm actually just gonna straight go to what the answer should look like and, and I know that my answer is always two binomials okay so see if you can just um, you can follow me here I know that when I multiply my first two terms when I multiply these two guys that that has to give me my first term has to has to has to has to has to has to give me my, my first term so I know that this is either gonna be uh, 12a and a uh, let's see, it could be a 4a and 3a, it could be a 6a and 2a, right? I mean, there's a number of possibilities that can go right there. And then same thing for when you multiply these two guys, that, that has to give us 21b squared. Okay, negative 21b squared. And there's 7 and 3, or 3 and 7 right there. So what I'm going to do is this. Okay, so, so I'm just going to try... 4a and 3a, okay. And again, like I can switch a or 3a and 4a and make this one 3 and then make this one 4. And then I'm going to make the, uh, this guy right here uh, 7b and uh, 3b. Okay. Now, how do you know if this really is the answer? Well, what you do is that you have to multiply uh, the inner ones and the outer ones. Okay. If you multiply these, 7b and 3b. That's a 21AB. And then 4A and 3B is a 12AB. You, you, you have to take their sum. And their sum like has to give you the middle right here. Okay. And again, like I haven't put any plus or minus signs, but but is it possible to get a negative 19 out of 21 and 12? Well, no, right? I mean, you're not gonna get anything right there. So so this won't be the answer uh, right here. Okay, again, so this this guess and check could could get very convoluted because you're just guessing and guessing and guessing and guessing, and then soon you just go straight to there. So um, that's just kind of like the nature of the beast if you're going to guess. So uh, I actually like these numbers here. I'm actually just going to maybe switch these real quick. So I'm going to switch the 3a and 4a. Again, I'm not I'm not putting any plus or minus signs yet. Like I'm just curious. Will this see that? So it's going to give me 28 AB, and this right here is going to give me 9 9 AB. Is it possible to get negative 19 out of 28 and 9? Well, it is, right? Yeah, I mean, say if I subtracted 28 minus 9, or actually negative 20, if this was a negative 28, now it's a positive 9. Uh, that would give me a negative 19 AB. So in order to make that a negative 28 AB, I'm going to make that a 7, and, and, and then that's going to be a positive there. And I actually got the answer on my second try. Now sometimes you won't get it on your second try, sometimes you won't get it on your fifth try, so that's why guessing and checking can kind of get very long and tedious, um, but I kind of like it in, in this kind of way here. So that would be it. If you multiply it all out, you would get this guy right here. I'm going to do the same thing over here, and the numbers aren't as big, so maybe the answer can come to us a little uh, quicker here. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with my parentheses, and I know that when I multiply this guy and this guy, that has to give me uh, 6m squared, and I know when I multiply um, this dude and that little guy, that has to give me negative 5n squared. All right, so let's start with, let's see, 6m squared. So I'm going to do 
3m and 2m and 5 is only one way to get 5 you know 1 and 5 so I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and put <clears throat> I'll just put n and then 5n right here and again so, so multiply it out and then see if you get 7 right here so if I multiply these guys I'll get 2mn and if I multiply these guys right here um, I'll get 15mn Oops, n. Now, is it possible to get 7 out of that? Oh, well, no, right? So I know that that's not correct. But, but I'll leave that right there. And I'm just going to switch them right now. And I always do that. Like I'll just switch the first ones and see what happens there. So if I put 2m, and then I'm going to put a 3m, and then 5n. Let's see if that makes a difference. So if I multiply these guys, I'll get 3mn. If I multiply these guys right here, I'll get 10 mn. So is it possible to get a 7 mn out of 3 and 10? Well, yeah, right? This just has to be minus. So if I want that to be minus, then I make that a negative, and then that has to be positive. And, uh, and then we have the answer then. There it is.